Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam, my name is Brittany, this is Rescues and Reads, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome, I'm so glad to have you, and if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate you for returning to another video. Today we are going to discuss some of the new releases coming out in December. Now, I mentioned this in my book of the month prediction videos, but December is just not a great month for new book releases. When I was preparing for that video, as well as for this one, I had a hard time determining what I wanted to feature in either video. And I didn't even know what I wanted to talk about because there are not very many releases and there are certainly not very many notable releases, but I did manage to come up with about 12 books that I'm going to discuss in this video. So we are going to go ahead and just jump right in, starting with the first Tuesday in December, which is December 5th. Now, really quickly, I'm going to start by making a correction to the new release video that I made for November. Now, for some reason, when I was preparing for that video, I was under the impression that The Frozen River by Ariel Lahan was a November release. In fact, I believe I specifically saw that it was coming out on November, I think, 14th. I don't know what gave me that impression. I don't know where I got that information. But as I was doing research for this video, I kept seeing The Frozen River pop up over and over and over. And I was confused about that. So I looked and it said that it was coming out on December 5th. So I'm not sure if I got my wires crossed or what, but that is actually a December release. I'm not going to talk about it here because again I did already talk about it in that November new release video but also I decided that since it was coming out in December that I was going to feature it as one of my book of the month predictions. So I have talked about this book in both of those videos and you are welcome to check out either one if you are interested in that historical fiction I know that I personally am. Now continuing on with December 5th releases we actually have a science fiction release coming out called Yours for the Taking by Gabrielle Korn and this is actually a release that has been getting quite a lot of buzz and I think that there is a possibility that you could could see it featured on Book of the Month. It is not one that I personally decided to feature in that video, but I wouldn't necessarily be surprised. This says, the year is 2050. Ava and her girlfriend live in what's left of Brooklyn, and though they love each other, it's hard to find happiness while the effects of climate change rapidly eclipse their world. Soon it won't be safe outside at all. The only people guaranteed survival are the ones whose applications are accepted to The Inside Project, a series of weather-safe city-sized structures around the world. Jacqueline Millinder is a reclusive billionaire women's rights advocate, and thanks to a generous donation, she's just become the director of The Inside, being built on the bones Manhattan. Her ideas are unorthodox yet alluring. She's built a whole brand around rethinking the very concept of empowerment. Shelby, a business major from a working class family, is drawn to Jacqueline's promise of power and impact. When she lands her dream job as Jacqueline's personal assistant, she's instantly swept up into the glamorous world of corporatized feminism. Also drawn into Jacqueline's orbit is Olympia, who is finishing up medical school when Jacqueline recruits her to run the health department inside. The more Olympia learns about the project, though, the more she realizes there's something much larger at play. When Ava is accepted to live inside and her girlfriend isn't, she's forced to go alone, but her heartbreak is quickly replaced with a few feeling of belonging. Inside seems like it's the safe space she's been searching for most of the time. Other times, she can't shake the feeling that something is deeply off. As she, Olympia, and Shelby start to notice the crack in Jacqueline's system, Jacqueline tightens her grip, becoming increasingly unhinged and dangerous in what she is willing to do and who she is willing to sacrifice to keep her dream alive. At once a mesmerizing story of queer love, betrayal, and chosen family, and unflinching indictment of white corporate feminism, Gabrielle Korn's Yours for the Taking holds a mirror to her own world in all its beauty and horror. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be very heavy on social commentary. This is definitely not something that I will be picking up, but like I said, it has been getting a lot of buzz and so I thought that it would be worthwhile to go ahead and mention it here in case it is something that you are potentially interested in. Another one that's coming out on the fifth that has been getting a lot of buzz, I've been seeing it go around, is The Curse of Penrith Hall by Jess Armstrong. It seems like this might be a historical horror slash gothic mystery. I'm not entirely clear. It says, after the Great War, American heiress Ruby Vaughn made a life for herself running a rare bookstore alongside her octogenarian employer and housemate in Exeter. She's always avoided dwelling on the past, even before the war, but it always has a way of finding her. When Ruby is forced to deliver a box of books to a folk healer living deep in the Cornish countryside, she is brought back to the one place she swore she'd never return. A more sensible soul would have delivered the package and left without rehashing old wounds, but no one has ever accused Ruby of being sensible. Thus begins her visit to Penrith Hall. A foreboding fortress, Penrith Hall is home to Ruby's once dearest friend Tamsin and her husband, Sir Edward Chenoweth. It's an unsettling place, and after a more unsettling evening, Ruby is eager to depart. But her plans change when Penrith's bells ring for the first time in 30 years. Edward is dead. He met a gruesome end in the orchard, and with his death brings whispers of a return to curse. It also brings Ruin Cavell, the person whose books brought her to Cornwall, the one the locals call a peller, the man they believe can break the curse. Ruby doesn't believe in curses or pellers, but this is Cornwall, and to these villagers, the curse is anything but lore, and they believe it will soon claim its next victim, Tamsin. To protect her friend, Ruby must work alongside the peller to find out what really happened in the orchard that night. So that definitely sounds kind of interesting. It's a mixture of genres for sure. It definitely has some good atmospheric vibes to it, so that is certainly intriguing to me. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to actually add it to my TBR, but it is definitely on my radar. 
This next one is one that you will probably already be familiar with because it was actually an early release featured on Book of the Month in November. It is a romance called This Spells Love by Kate Robb. When Gemma gets dumped by her long-term boyfriend, she reacts the way any reasonable 28-year-old would by getting drunk with her sister, kooky aunt, and best friend Dax. After one too many margaritas, they decide to perform a love cleansing spell, which promises to erase Gemma's ex from her memory. They follow all the instructions, including a platonic kiss from Dax to seal the deal. When Gemma wakes up, she realizes that the silly spell has worked. Not only does it seem that she never dated her ex, but the rest of her life is completely unrecognizable. The worst part? Dax has no idea who she is. To reverse the spell and get back to her old life, Gemma must convince her once best friend, now near stranger, to kiss her. But as she carries out her plans, she finds herself falling for him hard. Soon, Gemma begins to wonder whether she even wants to go back to the way things once were. What if Dax was the one all along? That really just sounds cute, sweet, charming. You have a person who casts a spell that basically changes her whole entire life. So again, that was one that was released by Book of the Month early in November. So you probably have seen this one floating around, but I did want to officially mention it here because it does come out on December 5th. Next on the 5th, we have a thriller called Five Bad Deeds by Kaz Freer. Ellen Walsh has done something very, very bad. If only she knew what it was. Teacher, mother, wife, and all around good citizen, Ellen is juggling nonstop commitments from raising a teen and two toddlers to job hunting to finally renovating her dream home, the Meadow House. Amidst the chaos, an ominous note arrives in the mail, declaring, people have to learn there are consequences, Ellen, and I'm going to teach you that lesson. Why would someone send her this? Ellen has no clue. She's no angel, a white lie here, an occasional sharp tongue there, but nothing to incur the wrath of an anonymous enemy. She never intentionally hurt anyone, but intention doesn't matter to someone. Someone blames this supposed good person for all the bad they've experienced, and maybe they have reason to, because few of us get through life without leaving a black mark on someone else's. Could the five bad deeds that come to haunt Ellen explain why things have gone so horribly wrong? As she races to discover who's set on destroying her reputation and her future, Ellen continues to receive increasingly threatening messages, each one hitting closer to everything she cherishes. So it sounds a little bit intriguing, but also it sounds a little bit vague, a little bit generic. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one. Again, this is another one that is on my radar. It has been blurbed by Lisa Unger. So if that tells you anything, I've never read anything by Lisa Unger, but if you are a fan of hers, that might intrigue you to pick this one up. And it does come out on the 5th. Another thriller that is coming out on the 5th, this one actually just came onto my radar. It seems like it's going to be a domestic thriller. It's called The Couple in the Photo by Helen Cooper. Lucy and her husband Adam have been best friends with another couple, Cora and Scott, for years. The four are practically family. They vacation together, co-own a beach cottage, and their children are inseparable. So Lucy is devastated when, while looking at a colleague's photos of a trip to the Maldives, she spots a picture of Scott, apparently on vacation with another woman. Then she learns that the woman in the photo has gone missing. Lucy can't help but fear that Scott was involved, but searching for answers might uncover secrets about Scott, Cora, and even her own husband that could destroy the picture-perfect lives they have built together. Or maybe she was never part of the picture at all. Is it possible everyone knows more than they are letting on? If so, what are the consequences of exposing the truth? So that sounds a little bit intriguing. We have a woman who suspects her best friend's husband of cheating and doing something shady, and she's kind of trying to get down to the bottom of it. This is another one that is certainly on my radar, and I would be willing to check it out. And so I wanted to go ahead and make sure you were aware of it in case you are interested as well. It looks like the 5th is actually going to be the major release date for December. I still have two more to talk to you about for this date, and they are both romances. First is called The Fake Mate by Lana Ferguson, and I believe this is kind of like a lighthearted paranormal romance. It says Mackenzie Carter has had some very bad dates lately. Model train experts, mansplainers, guys weirdly obsessed with her tail. She hasn't had a successful date in months. Only a year out of residency, her grandmother's obsession with Mackenzie, finding the perfect mate to settle down with, threatens to drive Mackenzie barking mad. She's a wolf shifter, by the way. Out of options, it feels like a small thing to tell her grandmother that she's met someone. That is, until she blurts out the name of the first man she sees and the last man she would ever date, Noah Taylor, the big bad wolf of Denver General. Noah Taylor, interventional cardiologist and all-around grump, has spent his entire life hiding what he is. With outdated stigmas surrounding unmated alphas that have people wondering if they still howl at the moon, Noah has been careful to keep his designation under wraps. It's worked for years until an anonymous tip has everything coming to light. Noah is left with two options, come clean to the board and risk his career or find himself a mate. The chatty, overly friendly ER doctor asking him to be her fake boyfriend on the same day he's called to meet the board has to be kismet, right? Mackenzie will keep her grandmother off her back and Noah will get a chance to prove he can continue to work without a real mate, a mutually beneficial business transaction. They both rationalize. But when the fake mate act turns into a very real friends with benefits arrangement, lines start to blur and they quickly realize love is a whole different kind of animal. So that's a paranormal rom-com. I don't know if I've ever actually read anything like that, but we have two wolf shifters who need to be in a relationship for convenience purposes, each one needing each other for their own purposes. It sounds like it could be a cute, fun time. I have never read anything by Lana Ferguson before, but this is another one that has been kind of going around. I'm seeing it all over the place. I do know that some people predict it could be a romance feature on Book of the Month or December, so I definitely wanted to put it on your radar. The final book that we're going to talk about for the fifth, another romance, and it's also another romance that has been going around and I have also seen featured in some other Book of the Month predictions is Technically Yours by Denise Williams. Pearl Harris has learned the hard way to be careful in work and in love. She has the chance to make lasting change at Our Code, a nonprofit aimed at inspiring high school 
dollars to code, but a recent scandal puts its reputation at risk. Further complicating things, Pearl didn't expect the one man she'd never stopped thinking about to join as the newest member of her board of directors. Cord Matthews fell for Pearl when they met in an elevator eight years ago. She's just his type, smart, capable, and makes him laugh. But when she broke his heart, he decided love wasn't for him. When they reconnect after years with no contact, Cord is tempted to consider breaking his ban on serious relationships, but going public with a romance between them might derail Pearl's career and the progress she's made at Our Code. While Pearl and Cord are both hesitant to trust their feelings and take a risk, it soon becomes impossible to keep ignoring the electricity between them. Cord is a skilled programmer, but a workplace romance might spell disaster for both of them, and love isn't easily debugged. Again, another cute, sweet, heartwarming rom-com that is coming out on the 5th if you were interested. All right, it doesn't look like I have anything for the 12th, so moving right on into the 19th, we have the newest release from John Mars called The Vacation. Y'all, I was originally excited to hear that he had a new release coming out this year, but after recently reading his most recent release called The Air Marriage Act, which I absolutely hated, I'm very trepidatious about him, so y'all will have to maybe convince me to potentially pick up more from him in the future. There is just a very, very small blurb about this one. It says, Venice Beach, Los Angeles, a paradise on earth. Tourists flock to the Golden Coast and the promise of Hollywood, but for eight strangers at a beachfront hostel, there's far more on their minds than an extended vacation. All of them are running from something, and they all have secrets they've killed to keep. Very vague, very generic. It doesn't give you absolutely anything to go off of, so I'm not really sure how my interest is supposed to be peaked, but if you are a fan of John Mars, this is his newest release coming out on the 5th. And then the only other release that I have for the 19th is one I'm not going to say too terribly much about because it's actually Heartstopper Volume 5. I'm sure that you are all very, very familiar with Heartstopper. It is a series of YA queer graphic novels, I believe, by Alice Oseman. It is a hit. It's already been adapted. A lot of people really, really love and cherish the series. I personally have never read it and I probably never will, but I know that so many people love the series. And so just in case you were not aware that Volume 5 was coming out, I wanted to go ahead and mention it here for you. This next one, according to Amazon, is actually coming out on December 25th, which is odd because first of all, it's a Monday and second of all, that's Christmas, but that's the only date I've been able to find for this book. So we're going to go ahead and go with it. The book is called Better Than Revenge by Elizabeth Adler. Twin sisters, 38 years old, each attractive and charming, one quiet and cool, the other loud and vivacious. Based in Europe, they travel the world, always first class and always under a different guise. Makeup, wigs, hairstyles, clothing, accents, they can transform themselves into anyone the situation demands. Professional grifters, they con rich men who inevitably fall for their special brand of charm, style, and glamour, and who later find themselves relieved of a great deal of money, cars, once even a plane. Feeling like fools, the sisters' victims rarely attempt to do anything about it, which has allowed the sisters to continue their con uninterrupted, despite behind hands rumors. Interpol has been after them for years, always three feet behind these clever women, until one of them upsets the whole careful balance, alienating her twin and threatening their way of life by falling in love with the man who was meant to be their next mark. He is found dead, murdered. Did the jealous sister do it, or was it someone else entirely? An attractive, intelligent agent from Interpol is on the hunt for answers, and the sister's game is becoming more dangerous than ever before. So that actually sounds really intriguing. You have two twin sisters, they are con artists, and that's how they go through life, but one of them, unfortunately, it falls for a mark, and that mark ends up dead, and she doesn't know whether it was her twin sister who did it or someone else, and meanwhile, of course, Interpol is on their tail. So this is certainly one that I am definitely intrigued by. I have never read anything by Elizabeth Adler, so if you have read from her, please let me know what your thoughts are, but this is definitely one that I am intrigued by. And again, says that this is coming out on Christmas. All right, and then we are already at the final two releases that I'm going to talk about in this video. They are both coming out on December 26th. The first is a romance. It is called On the Plus Side by Jenny Howe. Everly Winters is perfectly happy to navigate life like a good neutral paint color, appreciated but unnoticed. That's why she's still a receptionist instead of exploring a career in art, why she lurks but never posts on the forums of her favorite makeover show On the Plus Side, and why she's crushing so hard on her forever unattainable co-worker. When no one notices you, they can't reject you or insist you're too much. This plan is working perfectly until someone secretly nominates Everly for the next season of On the Plus Side. Overwhelmed by the show's extremely extroverted hosts and how much time she'll have to spend on screen, she finds comfort in a surprising friendship with the grumpy but kind cameraman, Logan. Soon, Everly realizes that he's someone she doesn't mind being noticed by. In fact, she might even like it. But when their growing connection is caught on camera, it sends the show's ratings into a frenzy. Learning to embrace all of herself on national TV is hard enough. Can Everly risk heartbreak with the whole world watching? That actually sounds really sweet. It's giving me one to watch vibes by Kate Stamen London, and I loved that book. It surprisingly was a five stars. I was not expecting that book to blow me away like it did. And this sounds like it's going to be very similar. It again contains a plus size main character who is going on reality TV and falling in love. So this is certainly one that I might be willing to check out, even though I'm kind of moving far away from romantic comedies, but I am definitely intrigued by the premise of this one. All right, and the very last book we are going to talk to you about today is a new release from Terry Parlato called What Waits in the Woods. Now, I have tried to read Terry Parlato in the past, um, a new release that came out, I don't know if it was this year or last year, and I DNF'd it within like the first couple of pages because I just found the writing to be obscenely basic and it was just not working for me. Um, I could potentially be tempted to try another one of hers. I don't know. This one sounds a little bit intriguing. When Esme Foster left the Boston suburbs to become a professional ballerina, the future shimmered with promise. 11 years later, her career has been derailed by an injury and 
as Mae knows, it's time to come back to Greybridge to help her brother care for their ailing father. But her return coincides with an unthinkable crime. Kara Cunningham, one of Esme's high school friends, is found dead in the woods behind the Foster's house. Esme is shocked and grieving, but also uneasy. In her dreams, she still sees the man who showed up at the scene of the car accident that killed her mother and told Esme he was going to kill her too. Family and friends insisted the figure was a product of Esme's imagination, that she was concussed after the crash, but she and Carol looked alike, sharing the same petite build, the same hair color. Could Kara's murder have been a case of mistaken identity? Detective Rita Myers is familiar with close-knit communities like Greybridge, where beneath the friendliness, there are whispers and secrets. The town has seen other tragedies too, including the long ago drowning of a young girl in a pond deep in the woods. Even within the once closed circle of friends that included Kara and Esme, Rita discerns a ripple of distrust. Day by day, Esme discovers more about the place she left behind and the friends and family she thought she knew. Soon, shining a light into the darkness to learn what really happened the night Kara died is the only way she can bring the nightmare to an end. So I'm definitely liking some of the vibes of the story. We definitely have that reluctant return home. We definitely have some secrets and lies. So like I said, there is definitely something intriguing about this premise and I could potentially be convinced to try another book from Terry Parlato in the future. All right, everybody. And that is it. Those are all the new releases that I wanted to talk with you about today. As always, this list is not meant to be comprehensive at all. So if there are some new releases that you are excited about for December, please feel free to leave that linked down below in the comments to let everybody else know what is coming out. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me a heart emoji of any color. I always love seeing all of your comments and it definitely helps out my channel so, so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I will be participating in Bookmas this year. That means from December 1st through December 25th, I will be aiming to post one video every single day for that time period if I can be successful. So if you are interested in seeing what content is coming, please be sure to also hit that subscribe button down below so you do not miss anything that is coming your way. And you all know that I love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the link to all the books that I've discussed in this video. Until next time, y'all.